This is my Visual 200 terminal. This is a serial terminal. I think it's a standard serial terminal. We'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, but it came with my MSI 8080 and CompuPro 816 uh, S100 computers. And this is a very period correct terminal for those systems. And it would be handy to get this thing going before I start working on those computers so that I have something that I know will work with them and is compatible with the software. Like I showed in the KPro 4 video, uh, the WordStar 3.0 that came on the 8-inch discs with my S100 systems supports this terminal natively. So it makes it a great candidate to have to get those machines going. But there is a lot of work that we're gonna have to do to get this thing up and running. It is, of course, utterly, revoltingly, disgustingly dirty. So that has to be taken care of, but that will not just be on the outside, that's likely on the inside, because everything I got from that group of hardware was literally stored outside in a barn. So it's probably, inside too. Additionally, speaking of inside, I can see through the back some quite large capacitors, a 6800 UF 25 volt capacitor just for one. Uh, that's the kind of thing that we should be doing a reform with. So I have my capacitor reforming setup ready to go over here. Um, so our goals are going to be getting into the machine, extracting those capacitors, putting them onto the reforming setup, getting that going while we then start to clean up the machine and investigate any other potential problems. And we might even have to drop the motherboard into an ultrasonic cleaner. I had to do that for the Televideo 950s that I worked on from this listing as well to really get it clean. But I think the motherboard is vertically oriented in this one, so that may not be necessary. But I'm prepared to do that if needed. <laughs> Now, I have a lot of objectives here, so I kind of want to make a checklist to go over with this stuff so that I make sure I keep on track. So one objective that I have here while we're working on this machine is that I actually want to really well document it. Uh, I have a camera set up. We're going to take some pictures of the process and the boards and stuff because this machine is kind of unusual and I just want to make sure that I have as much of that preserved as possible. Then we're going to go ahead and get it disassembled, and then we're going to inspect the things. Now, the first thing I mentioned that we're going to be looking at is removing the caps to reform. So we're going to be removing those, and then we're going to be inspecting the PCBs. So we're going to inspect the PCBs for other potential issues, but we definitely need to get the big caps that are on there out of there. So after we get those going, we are going to do a general cleaning of the machine because it's disgusting. And this may mean a full keyboard disassembly um, because I can feel that the keys are jamming a little bit. So we may have to look into that. And then it will be a reassemble in a test. So we're gonna go through all of these different steps with this so that we can try and figure out uh, what all we're gonna need to do and what all needs repair. Definitely cap reforming and cleaning. Uh, hopefully the PCBs don't need to be run through the ultrasonic cleaner because I will have to remove sensitive components like crystals and capacitors, not capacitors, transformers, um, and some other sensitive parts, uh, but it shouldn't be too bad for something from 1980, so hopefully it won't be a pain. Keyboard is a little bit of a wild card because I don't know what the switch type is. So hopefully it's not foam and foil, but we won't know until we really get it going or I tear it apart and look inside. Time to start tearing this thing apart. We're gonna set the keyboard to the side uh, because that's not going to have any of the complicated stuff in it that I'm really concerned about, but that's also why I had to make a note about it because I can easily forget about it and just leave it sitting off to the side. So I wanna look on the bottom at first here because it's got something weird going on down there. Yeah, I seem to recall something like maybe this could be raised and lowered to change the angle the display is at. I'm not 100% sure. I can see a label down here uh, for visuals marked as visual 200. Serial number is long. All right, and then the only other thing of particular note I see here is what a, I'm going to guess are brightness and contrast sliders tucked away on the bottom here. That's kind of weird. All right, the uh, only two screws I see for the top are right here. Oh, oh, that's not what I expected. All right. Okay, fancy. 
All right. So here is the bulk of the main board. Let me get a picture of that here. Uh, the main thing that I'm worried about first off is everything up here. So this is all of the power supply. Uh, so we have two big caps there, 50 volt, 2200 UF. I've uh, reformed exactly those before. Uh, so those are gonna be possible. And then we have a 6800 UF, 25 volt. Now, the legs on the capacitors look perfect. Yeah, no issues there. I doubt these are leaking uh, at all. And I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that they probably have not had their lifespan depleted since they're enormous. So reforming those is a very good step. But we're going to need to get the board out so we can access the bottom before we can get those out. Now, I was looking over here at a handful of other small electrolytic caps, but uh, you can also get a good look at the PCB here. It looks quite clean. I don't think I'm going to have to run this through the ultrasonic cleaner. I think I'll be able to get away with uh, some ESD dusting along the bottom where some dust is settled on top of the connectors, but everything else looks pretty much fine. So, yeah, no real reason to get it all taken apart and make it way more complicated than it needs to. All right, I'm going to take out... Uh, the main board here, I suppose, looks like we just have the two connectors. Uh, I'm going to guess this one is power in because I see the transformer back there. That one's probably video out. All right, let's get the PCB out. All right, before I pull this out, I'm going to make a guess. There's going to be a PCB at the bottom still, but it's going to be small, uh, maybe three of them because we need CRT driving stuff still. I don't see any of that on here. Okay. Oh, just the one, and then the weird faders are just glued to the uh, bottom. Okay, that's not bad. And I think that's a generic off-the-shelf uh, CRT control board. Bunch of electrolytic caps on there, so we'll probably want to investigate that at least a little bit. Big ol' chunky transformer right there, though. Now, the goal is going to be to remove these three capacitors. That one, realistically, is not going to need to be reformed. It's not large enough for that. Uh, there aren't any large enough inside the uh, CRT uh, stuff. Now that I'm looking at that either, so we're going to ignore all of that too. So it's really just going to be these three that I am mostly concerned about. Uh, these ones are on the edge, but I'm going to be in here and doing it anyway, so I might as well do it. If these were the only big ones in here, I might not do these, but... Eh, might as well, because of that one. That one, I definitely want to get done. Uh, before I do this, uh, the positive points are marked there, and it is technically marked on this one, but it's under the cap right there, so, okay. All right, those are the caps removed. All right. Now that we have the capacitors out, it's time to set them up for reforming. So I'm going to turn on my power center here, which is going to turn on my 34401A multimeter and my 6633A 50 volt uh, 2 amp power supply. With that, we should be able to reform all of these caps very quickly and easily. Now, how you set up for reforming is something that I have covered in a dedicated video. Uh, and conveniently, I made this handy little graphic that, uh, oh, even more conveniently, Hackaday put on their site so I can remind myself how to actually connect this. Uh, and then we're going to be starting with the, uh, 6800 UF cap, because that one's going to be the biggest one to get done. And then we're going to go ahead and set up my capacitor reforming software and get that started. All right, took me a little while to get it going, but the capacitor is now being reformed utilizing my software. That is an automated process. I'll happen in the background. And while that's going on, I'm going to turn my attention to cleaning the PCB, which the cap just finished reforming already. I'm gonna go ahead and restart that. The cap is either in absolutely fantastic shape or I didn't let it dwell enough. I think these caps might be in really good shape. That was actually, that was really, really fast. Uh, that only happens when caps are in good shape, so that's a good sign. Uh, anyway, we're gonna clean the uh, main board here now. We're gonna get all the dust and stuff off, so let's work on that. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and clean the PCB, and uh, I'm gonna do this using my Atrix ESD Safe Vacuum. 
This is grounded uh, from the tip uh, to the actual earth ground for the electrical system. I have additionally grounded the board here and I'm using ESD safe parts here. So this is all a safe way to let me dry clean this board so I don't have to get anything wet on here. Just pull up all the little bit of dust that's settled on there. So let's go ahead and do this. This thing really wasn't that bad. So yeah, it didn't take that much to get this uh, to a point that I'm happy with. So I'm gonna call that clean on the main board. I'm gonna put that off to the side over here actually, uh, while the capacitor reforming continues. And now we can turn our attention to the cosmetic cleaning over here. Uh, I think that's all we need to do now. Maybe we should pull out that uh, CRT board there. Let me see if I can figure out how that's done. So yeah, looking at this board, uh, it looks fine. Uh, it's phenolic style FR2 or whatever. Uh, so it would be pretty obvious if the caps were leaking on it because it would be very discolored and weird looking, but it looks perfectly fine. Uh, it's held in with plastic standoffs, which may not survive me removing it. Uh, so I'm not particularly inclined to try and remove it right now. So I think we'll leave this as is and then we'll test it. And then if there are issues, we'll pull it out and take a look at it from there. But for right now, I'm gonna leave it be because nothing on there looks that suspicious. All right, the first capacitor over here is done. So we can set that one off to the side. That should be ready to rock. So we're gonna put on one of the other ones now. These are 50 volt 2200 UF capacitors. So I'm expecting these to take a little bit longer because of the higher voltage. The good news about working on these capacitors is that it's literally impossible for me to overdo it. <laughs> so we don't have to worry about that. A visual 200-1-2200-1, which makes sense in my head. I know it's kind of weird. All right, so max voltage 50. Okay, there we go. All right, now that we're done with the main board, I do want to try and get the CRT uh, enclosure cleaned up here. I would like to remove the bezel, however. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is use the ESD vacuum. That way we can pull up as much dust as we can without having to uh, waste a bunch of like wet paper towels and stuff. Okay, I'm gonna do the screen at the uh, end with uh, Windex as a final pass. So I'm just gonna leave that for now because I'm probably gonna touch with my fingers and stuff again before we finish this up. So let me grab the keyboard and uh, the back plate and we'll get those cleaned. And then we're close to putting the caps back into the main board, reassembling this thing and firing it up. <laughs> All right, the outside of the back plate looks pretty good. The inside, not so much. And the keyboard just looks utterly horrendous. <laughs> but let's do the back plate first, because that's, that's gonna be a lot quicker. <laughs> so I'm just gonna ESD vacuum this. And yeah, you can definitely see the, uh, the runoff lines there where this was rained on outside. Ugh, very annoying. Yeah, this thing's, that's, very, very good. Also, external video. That's gonna be super nice. All right, keyboard. Ugh. All right, this is the first time I'm really looking at the keyboard uh, and getting a sense of what I'm in for here. I can see all of these spots at the bottom are nicks in the paint and they are rusted bits of metal, so I'm not thrilled about that. I am uh, loving this key here called convert function. <laughs> It's just weird. 
Uh, but you can see this thing is just caked in dirt and stuff. So yeah, it's gonna need a, a very, very serious clean here. Dude, that, that is just incredible. Whoa, I have never seen a pressed metal cable like relief like that. That is amazing. They didn't just cut a slotted hole in the bottom or the backside and stick it out there. That is like, that's awesome. The only way it could be better is if this had like a rubber bit that came out to do strain relief. But yeah, that's amazing. Whoa. All right. Uh, let's disassemble it. Uh, then we can clean the individual pieces rather than try and just hope we don't mess stuff up. So, ooh, oh, okay. Yeah, so I was right. Okay. Well, that's gonna make that a cakewalk to clean. I'm nervous that that's foam and foil. <laughs> oh no. I mean, I would really like to get all of the dust bunnies out of here. Jeez, that's a lot of random crud in there. And you can just see it all laying on top. Uh, I would like to get all that out. And that that's not like a mat or something in the bottom there. That's just, that's, oh, <laughs> we are so taking the key plate off. Oh no, we are not. We are not leaving all that in there. Oh no. Oh, <laughs> great. Okay. The worst thing I can see on this PCB when we flip it over is Keytronic. So what are we, what are we in for? Okay, I don't see Keytronic so far. The numbering is not super indicative of that. Can we see anything on the top? Just KB01-003 there. KTC, KTC, I think that's the, the model, KTC, okay. I, I am inclined to take all these screws off because I wanna know how bad this is. So, the moment of truth. Ah, dang it, ah, you stupid. I knew it when I saw KTC, drat. All right, well, it looks like I just don't have enough foam and foil pads on hand after much, much searching for a second bag of them that I can't find. So I'm gonna have to order them. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and get the case cleaned up here, which is gonna include the disgusting one here too. Uh, and then when, so once I get the new pads, I'll be able to replace these uh, with those because I don't want to put that back together because that was a lot of little tiny screws in there. I really don't want to deal with that multiple times and fatigue the plastic and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, let's go ahead and get this cleaned and then I will have to come back to this project and finish it in a little bit later. I'm gonna wait until the keyboard is back onto this to try and clean the keys because I will want them reinforced. Oh my gosh, you're so dirty. <laughs> but yeah, that already is gonna look stunning. Oh my gosh. All right, it's been a while since I last worked on this project, uh, the Visual 200 terminal, uh, but I left all this up so I could keep track of where we're at. So. Uh, documents, uh, I kind of want to re refresh myself on this whole list, figure out where we're at, what we've done, and what we still need to do. So, documentation, um, I still haven't found my manual for it. I'm pretty sure I own it. I need to go back and watch my S100s uh, video on that, but I'm pretty sure I own the manual. So I need to look for that. But I also was wanting to document the device as I was disassembling and stuff. Uh, I kind of failed to document the inside of the keyboard, so I still need to work on that one a bit, so I'm not ready to cap or uh, cross that off. Caps reforming, though, we can check off as done. We did that in the last segment of this. Uh, so I know that's done. Inspect PCBs, they all looked good. So I'm not worried about any of those. Cleaning, we've done the outside of the case, but there's still a couple of things that I want to go over. Like I was looking at the keyboard cable here and it was taped up somewhere and it's got just residue on it. That should be cleaned off. So I have a little bit more work to do on that still. Keyboard is where we're picking up today because I now have foam and foil pads so that we can actually continue this thing and hopefully get it working today. All right, I just uh, took some good documentation photos of the keyboard parts here so that uh, I've got everything. Uh, I'll take a picture of the top of this one after I clean it though, because I haven't actually done that yet. Um, but we now need to set this aside and focus on this part because I need to replace all those foam pads. So 
Uh, if you haven't encountered this before, each of the keys has a silver pad in the bottom. And what happens is even if they haven't actually fully decayed yet, uh, they will decay and then the top side will just rip off uh, and then they won't work anymore. Or what will happen is that you will press them down, they will depress one time and then crush all of the foam and then never come back. So. If you encounter a foam and foil keyboard, you're pretty much guaranteed to have to replace it. So we have the top foil side, which is actually not electrically conductive. There should be a clear uh, piece of plastic over that and then the foil underneath of it because technically this is a capacitive keyboard measurement type. But on the bottom, we have a rigid plastic disc uh, and this holds the foam in place. Yeah, you can see as I squish it there, it's not doing as good of a job coming back up as it should. If I take out one of the new ones here, by contrast, wow, it's so much taller to begin with. Uh, it should spring back up, yeah, way, way faster. That's in much better condition than this one that's, yeah, crushed. Uh, if you started typing on this, you'd get a couple of key presses out of that, but then it would just never work again. So yeah, uh, that's always fun. But we gotta put these in, which means that I have to clip this rigid disc into place where these ones came out, which is really annoying to do. Looking into the key socket thing, where I just pulled that out, you can see the four clips there. Uh, and when you put these new pads in, you have to make sure all four clips are actually down or the key pad will be uneven, which will also make it not work. So this is a very tedious process. So. We're gonna go ahead and just work through this quickly here to try and get this done. Okay, that is all of the old pads out. It's time to put the new pads in. Um, it's been a while since I've done this with the clip type. I just did this with the uh, Memorex typewriter and I had to glue these on because they attach to a membrane. I'm gonna put the new pads in here. Uh, I'm gonna pop them in, then I'm gonna use a flat blade screwdriver to make sure that the rigid disc gets clicked into place under all four snaps. I don't want to use something that will uh, compress the entire foam pad down because when you're normally typing on this, uh, you can see you don't fully crush the pad down uh, and I don't want to like damage the cells in there by pressing on it too much. So I'm going to individually clip each one of these. So like 400 clips, fun. All right. That is all new foam and foil pads. But now we can begin the actual reassembly process. And then we'll find out if my uh, pads were properly attached since I manually clipped all four sides of all like 90 some pads here. Um, I think they'll be okay, but we won't know till we actually get the whole thing back together and test it out. Before we reassemble this, I should actually go ahead and clean this part. Um, I'm gonna have to get some fluid in here between the keys cause that's, that is gross. And I'm seeing there's dust under the keys too. I think I'm gonna use the air compressor and blow that out. So I'm gonna spend a bit more time on this part before we reassemble it uh, and actually just get some cleaning going. All right, after a bunch of different things, using keycap puller to get in between the keys and toothbrush, try and scrub around some stuff. I'm gonna call that good enough for now. I can get to more of this while it's reassembled, but uh, that's a lot less gross and dusty. So now we can actually put the keyboard back together. So first thing we're gonna have to do is put the PCB backplate on, which will go here like this. And then that gets secured with all billion screws that I had to remove for it. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do that. I do think there were some, yeah, the black ones here, I believe did not have screws. So don't put those in. Um, and I definitely totally remember where all the screws went that I pulled out of this thing. Yeah, for sure. All right, that's all of the screws back into the PCB backplane. So we can put this back into the chassis now. That's the keyboard itself reinstalled. So we can put the faceplate back on that we have all nice and pretty now. Oh, that is looking uh, like I may need to realign it. 
Keyboard? Yeah, so I guess that's another thing about this weird setup. Uh, if I loosen the keys, I think, I, or the bars, I think I can shift this back and forth. Oh, yeah, that's wonderful. Thanks. Okay, cool. Time for some trial and error. All clear all around. Okay, as annoying as this is, I really wish more old keyboards did this because so many of them have alignment issues and being able to just reposition it like that in here makes it so much easier to correct. It, this is, it's annoying and fiddly, but it's way better than some of the things I've seen. I have some computers where they literally just cut the chassis where it didn't line up. <laughs> rather than try and correctly position it in here like this. So as dumb as this seems, this is a good solution. I do actually like this. That is the finished keyboard. Maybe a little bit more cleaning here and there, but that should be pretty good. Oh yeah, I definitely need to clean the cable actually. Let's, uh, let's do that a little bit. Although I did notice there's actual visual branding on the cable here itself, which is ridiculously cool but I really want to get off the tape residue. So I don't know if I can clean that off without also ruining that because it's not on there very well. I'm gonna at least clean this a little bit towards the end. <laughs> I am quite happy with that. The visual branding still completely intact, but I managed to clean up the cable all around it. That might be the last bit of cleaning that we have to do, um, unless I try to go back over those keys one more time. Uh, but I think I wanna progress on here. Uh, we do need to reassemble the monitor side, but first we need to get the PCB done uh, and reinstall the capacitors that we reformed. So let's go take a look at that. All right, so in the last uh, segment that we worked on this, uh, we took out all of the capacitors and reformed them uh, using my power supply setup. Uh, so these should be clear to be turned back on without having to worry about the uh, quality or the integrity of the uh, oxide coating in here It's for the dielectric. So we're gonna go ahead and get those installed. And there we are. With the PCB's caps back on, uh, that means that we're screws away from turning this thing on for the first time and finding out if it works. So let's get the board back in there and see if this thing's just gonna work or not. Okay. Then the metal back plate, which we have already cleaned up, but it was also pretty good to begin with. And that is job done. It's theoretically ready to go. All right, now before we turn this on, I wanna look at uh, the back of this thing and make sure that I know how it's set up. And I wanted to make sure that I set half duplex mode uh, to half duplex actually, so that I will know that it is set correctly. One is half duplex, so up is half duplex. So we want to set seven here to up for half duplex, which will let us see what we type on the screen. Uh, so we don't have to have this connected to a computer first. There we are. So that one will be handy for initial tests too. So we'll leave all of that as is, um, because for now I just wanna see if we can type on the screen. All right, this is the power connector for the terminal. Uh, I'm gonna plug it in to this power strip here, which is not yet on. Uh, one thing I wanna do real quick before we actually attempt to turn this on is I'm just gonna cycle the power switch a few times, just in case it's corroded or oxidized or anything. More oxidization than corrosion. You can watch my video on my Metcal MX500 where that literally fixed it. So anyway, all right, we are in the off down position, confirmed. Here we go, live power, let's turn it on.
I don't hear a CRT raster. All right, I'm gonna attempt turning this on one more time. Uh, one thing I did not check uh, when I turned it on was whether or not any LEDs came on on the keyboard, which there are two, one labeled on here. I don't know if that actually means what we would think it means. It's also caps only, which should be able to turn on uh, if I press it. So power strip active, powering on terminal, nothing there. Okay. Well then. That all looks mostly okay. I was a little concerned about the strain relief, but it's fine. So there's apparently a breaker in this uh, that you can access the reset on the bottom. And that's it right there. Now I feel like this would be poked out uh, if it was popped, but yeah, I feel like that's Probably not it, although I can see the CRT heater from this angle, so I may turn it on at this angle anyway, just to see. And power. I do not see CRT heater. That did not change either. So testing mains power input. Oh. Um, well then. That's interesting. There is an issue there, cause yeah. Okay, after removing four screws, yep, that's right there. Oh my gosh, it's just a CRT right there. <laughs> okay, uh, yep, we can see the dirt frame where I didn't clean it, but now I can get to all the power stuff down here. So that's much nicer. All right, so here we have the switch side wires, and here's the breaker. I'm gonna check the breaker first, cause it's the weirdest, most complicated component here. Uh, and we'll see how that goes. Is continuity going through the breaker? Oh, okay. So is it the switch? So I believe this thin wire here is, yeah, it's going to this one, which goes to a like block here. So, I put probes, one here, and one to the other side of that. That should make contact, but isn't. Yeah, so if I press on the switch, it does better. Okay, if I bypassed the white side, turned it on, oh, well it wants to work right now. I could plug it in right now and turn it on, well, it's like that, it's probably bad resistance. Uh, let me do an actual continuity or a resistance measurement here. Oh, it's probably going through the black side. Hmm. I want to chance it. All right, I'm going to leave the switch. I'm not going to touch it. The power strip is off. I'm going to plug it in and we're going to turn it on and see what happens. <laughs> let me get the keyboard. Duh. Nah. Um, <laughs> it needs a logic board to be able to turn on. <laughs> okay. This has an actual possibility to work this time. Let's see what happens. I hear stuff. I hear much more stuff. LED is on. Ah, ugh. Um, okay, it's working, but, uh, hmm. I hear that, by the way, too. Okay, I think there might be some bad caps on the analog board. <laughs> Hold on, this is reforming in action. Wait, give it a second. Also, what on earth is with those characters? Um, okay, I think I might be hearing it get worse. I'm gonna turn it off. <laughs> 
Hmm. Interesting. All right, this is going to be a uh, test with the video set to black on white. So the whole screen should be green when it warms up. I also actuated pretty much every switch on there five times uh, to see if maybe it would uh, stabilize something. Well, that looks terrible. Definitely didn't stabilize anything. Huh. But it definitely has signs of life. That should be a bunch of E's, which isn't looking great. Although the image has very much stabilized compared to before. This. I mean, that almost kind of looks right. Man, it's really close. Yeah, I think the caps are bad. This is drawing more power and possibly reforming them or maybe just killing them off quicker. I don't know. I'm going to turn it off, though. It's definitely caps on the analog board. I think I'm very sure of that. Well, I'm going to have to call this part one of this thing here because I am fairly confident that I'm going to need to order new capacitors for the analog board. So I should be able to get this thing going once I order those, but I was not expecting to have to do that. I already had to order parts to get the foam pads for this thing, and that took about a month to get them. Uh, and I would really like to get this video done so I can clear out the footage and move on to the next thing. But I am going to order caps and come back to this because this thing is really cool and we got it really good looking. It's very pretty terminal, so I do want to get this thing going. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to have to fully recap the analog board for the CRT. It, the digital board does look like it's working fully uh, through the distortion of the individual lines, especially on that final test with the uh, black on white uh, where the cap seemed to settle out for a little bit there. Uh, we could clearly see the word this barely through the fuzz. So the ROM on the digital side for the video is working correctly. So it's definitely an analog problem and I'm pretty sure recapping the analog board will solve it. So I just need to spend a little bit of time going through figuring out what the caps are, making a caps wiki page entry, of course, and ordering them so that I can come back and finish this. But we're going to call that here for now uh, because there's nothing else I can do until I get new parts again. So if you enjoyed this video, you may want to subscribe to the channel to be notified when I release another one. If you want to help support the channel, you can find me on Patreon. But for now, that's it, and I will see you next time.